Income Tax 2021-2022 Tax Software Example Taxable Refunds, Credits, or Offsets of State and Local Income Taxes Get ready to get refunds to the max, diving into Income Tax. Here we are in our Lacert Tax Software. You don't need access to tax software to follow along, but you might want to have the Form 1040, which you can find on the IRS website at irs.gov, irs.gov. We're looking at our starting point being the single filer, Adam Smith, living in Beverly Hills, 90210. We have the 100,000 W-2 income standard deduction, the 12,550, getting us to the taxable income of the 87,450, which we can mirror on our income tax formula worksheet. 100,000, the 12,550 taxable income at the 87,450. And then we're gonna verify on page two that we have the tax at the 1515 and put that into our worksheet 15015. Okay, and then now gonna go back to the first page and we're gonna imagine that we've got a 1099 for the state refund. Now this would come from the state, so it will be dependent on what state tax returns you're primarily doing taxes in. If you're working in a state where there is no state tax, for example, if you're like in Nevada or something, then you're not going to get the 1099 like this from the state. If you're working in, say, California, for example, then you'll typically get a 1099. Everybody will basically have a refund oftentimes if they got a refund from the state in the prior year. And it could be a confusing document because most of the time when we get the 1099, we automatically think that we need to record it as income in some way. But remember that if the 1090, if the benefit that they got in the prior period was not something that they got to deduct, then you don't need to record it as income. And so general rule here, we're looking at the form 1040, that's the federal income tax return. If I got a refund on the federal income tax return, I would not then need to record that refund as income in the following year. So in other words, in tax year 2021, if I got a refund on the federal tax return in 2022, I would receive that refund. I don't have to record that as income in 2022 because the definition of a refund means that I simply overpaid in 2021. It's not income that I made and I shouldn't be paying taxes on it in the following year. However, if you're talking about state taxes, for example, California taxes in this case, that if it was 2021, for example, this filing year, and we got a refund from the state, then it wouldn't, it still wouldn't be income in the following year unless I got a benefit from it. And you would only get a benefit from it, let's say that you paid the state taxes in the current year, if you were itemizing. So if we go down here, we'll talk about itemized deductions later, but notice we have the standard deduction and the itemized deduction. The standard deduction was increased a few years ago to, to, to basically flatten or make the tax returns a little bit easier. So more people are taking the standard than itemizing. So you can have less people that really get the benefit from the state taxes. And then if I go to the schedule uh, A, that's how you would know if someone was itemizing. So they would have to be itemizing and then you'd have the tax area here and the state and local taxes are something that you could be getting a tax benefit. So only someone that itemized in the prior year uh, is someone that possibly could have had a tax benefit. If you got a tax benefit of taxes that you deducted, notice that these taxes that we're going to deduct are going to be on a cash basis. So in other words, if I was, if I paid in tax year 2021, 5,000 of state taxes, then I would be deducting 5,000 because I paid it in the current year. If I then got a refund in the following year, 2022 of 4,000, then I would have over, I got an over benefit of the 5,000 in the current year and the 4,000, I, I really should have only got a $1,000 deduction in other words. So we could fix that by amending the return but nobody wants to do that. Nobody wants to go back to the return and say, oh, I got a refund and therefore the deduction was only you know, 1,000. Instead, what we're gonna say is the refund that we got, if you got a tax benefit from it in the prior year. So in this example, if you got a tax benefit of 5,000 in the current year, and then you got 4,000 of it refunded to you, the 4,000 that you got refunded, we're gonna count as income in the following year. In this case, in 2022 would be the, would be the idea. So that instead of adjusting the prior year taxes, we're gonna basically count it as income in the following year. Now that all sounds fairly straightforward, except for the fact that just because we're itemizing doesn't mean we got the full benefit of, in this example, like the full 5,000. You can imagine many different scenarios where you didn't get the full benefit 
and and for example if you're just barely itemizing or if there was a cap in, t in terms of how much of the state taxes that you could take for example or the difference between the state taxes and what you would have gotten for just like uh, the sales tax standard kind of deduction would be types of things that uh, you wouldn't get the full benefit from so if someone was actually recording or did get a benefit they were itemizing and they got a benefit from the state taxes then then the question is well how much of the refund is going to be taxable in the in the current year so if i'm trying to determine in 2021 21 whether or not the state taxes 1099 i got is income or not i've got to go back to 2020 and see did they itemize if they did not itemize then i don't have to include it as income because they didn't get a benefit if they did itemize then they most likely got some state tax deduction then you would think i would have to include at least part of it then the determination is going to be how much do i have to include and that's what it gets a little bit more confusing the general rule in terms of data input i would say that if for example you have a continuing client a client that you had last year and this year and you're using tax software the software will help you out to determine if they itemized or not in the prior year and it will already know what the refund is because it calculated the refund in the prior year and it will help you out to determine how much of the the refund is going to be taxable if it's something other than all of it being taxable if it's a new client that you're picking up then instead of just entering the current tax year 2021 if it's a more complex client for example they're itemizing that would make them more complex in general you might want to go to the prior year go to 2020 and mirror just data input the tax return based on the paper return that they give you into the system so that you can have that more complex information in it including any kind of rollover information and the state tax information that then you can perform a or roll over into the current year so that it will be more like a continuing client and it'll help you out with those kind of calculations like the state tax that would be my general recommendation now a lot of people when they get this if, if you're new to the data input what you'll do is you'll go okay if i go to schedule one here i can see where i'm going to put that state uh, the taxable refunds i might jump to the data input for example a lot of software has this jump formats and say it's going to be a 1099 g that's the one that's the one i have so i'm going to say this is the state from the 1099 g and i'm going to put that let's say it was 5,000 into the refund category here and i would jump back on over to the forms and expect it to populate right there and it may not and the reason it may not is because the tax software doesn't know if the client itemized last year because i didn't perform the data forward all it knows is the tax refund in the current year so again, you might go to the prior year and performa it forward, and then it can help you determine if it's taxable or not. If you have no idea whether it should be taxable or not, and all you see is a 1099, and you see this line saying taxable refunds, you would expect that it would be taxable given just that information, and you're gonna be frustrated that, that it doesn't show up here. So uh, the, the way to kind of, the, then what you could do if, if, if it is a taxable item, you could go back on over and say, okay, I'm gonna go through basically the worksheet to determine if it's taxable. So I can basically jump on over here and go to my state tax worksheet and I can enter this data. So my options then are in the software, I can basically uh, go to the to the prior year and enter the data into the prior year, proforma it forward, or I can try to input the data into the current year. And, and this is like the prior year information that will help us to determine the portion of the state taxes that are that are uh, going to be taxable or i could force it doing some kind of override and say i want that to show up i'm going to right click i'm going to go back on over and i'm going to override it to 5000 right there now if i if i was to enter this in the prior year for example if i was to enter 2020 taxes and i saw that they had a refund that was taxable on the actual physical return that they turned in then I might just overwrite it in the prior year to get to mirror exactly what they have on their tax return and then possibly proforma it forward so the system can do it in the current year. But you want to be careful anytime that you're doing an override kind of thing in any kind of tax software, you'd like the software to do the calculations. If you're forcing something to happen, then it's likely that you're doing something you know wrong unless you know exactly why you're forcing it to, to, to make that change. So now we've got the 5,000 that are included. And then that would then 
sum up down here. Here's the 5,000 down below. That's gonna pull on over to the first page of the 1040 and line eight. And so now we've got our, our total income over here. We can add that then on the schedule one worksheet. I can, I can mirror that say in our tax worksheet for the schedule one. Actually, those are my adjustments. So let's go back on over. What I want is schedule one additional income. So I'll make an additional income schedule one and maybe I'll put it next to my schedule B. So I'm gonna add another one. I'm gonna call this schedule one additional income. Did I have that yet? I don't think I did that one yet, additional income. So then I'm gonna format this whole thing, selecting the carrot up top, right click and format it. And I'm gonna make that currency brackets and negative numbers, get rid of the dollar sign, no decimals. I'm gonna scroll up a little bit and I'm gonna call it up top. We're gonna to scroll up additional, let's call it schedule one additional income, income. And then let's make the whole thing bold. It might make it a little bit easier, not underlined, bolded, emboldened it. It has been emboldened. And then I'm just gonna call it taxable refunds. I'll just call it taxable refunds, taxable Re taxable hold on a second refunds and then i'm going to put that i'll just put that in the outer column because it should be a fairly straightforward number you might want a little bit more detail to do some more complex calculations if there's if it's something other than the amount on the 1099 but i'm just going to put one cell here for this point i'm going to make this i'm going to make this blue and then unblue this unblue that and then I'm going to total it out down here. This will be the total schedule one additional income. And I'll sum up the outer column, which just includes that, but we'll add more to it, it later. Check the spelling on it. Is it spelled okay? Look at, no, schedule one. I'll put a SCH, SCH schedule change it and then i'm going to add that line to the first page i'm going to double click on the income line i'm going to go all the way to the end they got these long descriptions because they're pulling in from another worksheet but plus i'm going to say the schedule one additional income that 5000 so there's the 105 the 12550 is the standard deduction we're at the 92450 so the 92450 if i go back on over to the first page first page and the 1040 1040 first page there's the 92450 and then page two is the tax which is now at the 16250 so i can go back on over and say okay this is at the 16250 16250 on the tax so that would be the general idea so remember the overview of this would basically be if you get the 1099, it's not taxable unless in the prior year they were itemizing. And then if they were itemizing, they probably got the state tax deduction. And then the determination is how much of the state taxes do you need to include to get to that determination? I would suggest then taking the prior year tax return. If it's a new client, entering that into the prior year so the software can help you with the, with the proforming of it over to determine how much of the adjusted gross income is, is taxable. If it's a more basic return and you don't have any itemized deductions, then the general rule is it wouldn't be taxable because you wouldn't have not gotten the tax benefit from it in the prior year.